and at the bottom we have the detector. Oops, that was not intended. Hey everyone, there is a Thackhouse and today I'm back with yet another button shy game. Um, <laughs> I think it will be quite a while until I'm through all or most of the games. You will still have a lot to look forward to in case you enjoy these videos. All right, today I will be playing the Pentaquark. That is quite special, first of all, because uh, I think it's one of the lesser known games. So this could be very interesting to almost everyone interested in those games because it is not talked about as much. Um, and also this game is really complicated and really tough. Um, I have won the game, so it's not impossible to win. I just cannot promise for the life of me that I will win today. But that's not what my videos are about. My videos are about presenting cool games to you, and this is a cool game. It is really geeky, like with the science topic here, with all the quarks you have to confine, so that is really fun. Before we get started, as usual, let me quickly set up the game. All right, and that is already the set of the game. As we know from most button shy games, very minimalistic. Um, so um, there is a specific um, way you have to shuffle this deck. You have to shuffle it first, then you have to turn over the top half of the deck and then shuffle it again, um, just because these are double-sided and we will have to turn over the deck um, twice in the playthrough. Um, so this game works as follows. Um, I will just start playing, kind of explain as we go. I think that's the best way to do it. So this is the beam deck here. And um, what we first need to do, first we have the beam phase. And what we do is that we will just deal out three cards from the beam deck here into the collider. So that is the middle row, which is the collider. Then this one here is the background. And at the bottom we have the detector. Oops, that was not intended. And here we have the detector. And what we need to do is that um, we need to confine or we need to collect specific quarks. These are all quarks here. Um, we need to um, have specific quarks at the bottom row um, of our play area. So in the detector, we need to collect one up arrow that is called, no? then you would just see up instead of down. Um, we need two up quarks actually, we need one down quark, we need one charm that is like this, almost, no, just without the X, and we need one anti-charm, which is that one here with the X. And also we need one red, one blue, one green, and then we need one color and it's anti-color. So we need red and anti-red. This is what we need to collect down here. But every round, at the end of every round, we have three of those, at the end of every round, like quarks that are not confined, so that are not collected together, so to speak, combined with each other, will leave this area again here, right? So um, we can confine quarks by either um, grouping a red, a blue, and a green one, or an anti-red, anti-red, and anti-blue. Um, you will see that with what's written down here, right? They will have the same color pretty much, but they will just um, uh, have a different name here, a red and anti-red, for example. Um, and also, or have a color and it's anti-color um, for for grouping them, for confining them. This sounds like a really a lot, and it is a lot. It was quite hard to get behind this concept, but let me just go through the game, and I think you over time you will understand how it works. I think that's much a much better tutorial. So let us get started. What we always do is we always do three actions um, now in the collider phase. In the collider phase, we always put one quark in the background, one quark in the detector, and one quark in our discard pile to the right here. This order needs to be maintained. That is very important. So what we want to do, it's very hard to explain tactics here because the game is very hard to understand. But um, so this really, this really makes your brain work, this game. Not because of only it's tough, but also because the concept is really hard to grasp. Um, so. Um, we definitely need an anti-charm and also we need a down arrow, right? So I think what I will do is I will put the anti-strange up here in the background because we don't need anti-strange at all. So if we lose that, that wouldn't be horrible. Um, and the anti-charm is quite, it's kind of hard to get. So I will put the anti-charm down here for now. I just need to combine that with a red card or with anti-blue and anti-green to 
that it keep that it stays down here because if it's not confined it will go to the discard pile at the end of the round um so and the red down i will for now put in the discard tile pile we will get that in two rounds you will get it back because next round it will be an anti-down card and in the third round it will be a down card again so we will get that later on again and that is it now we continue with the beam phase and with the collider phase again and we do that until the deck is empty so beam phase dealing out three of those oh there's a charm i would really like to have that one um can we make that i don't know if we can make it most likely i will we will lose one of these two um most likely because um i will probably not be able to confine this and the anti-red well we just need a red for that one and we would need an anti-blue maybe for that one we could be able to do that you know what um let's try that uh there's another anti-down we do need down for later on so i will put the red up here for now then I will put the blue down here because we do need charm and anti charm later on, but we just, we still need to confine those. And the anti green will just go to the discard pile for now. All right, now beam phase again. So we do have anti cards here. The anti up is not gonna work, but we need an anti blue to confine this one here. So, um, hmm. <sighs> Okay, so let's see. So I will put an anti-blue up here because then we might be able to confine something here. I will put the anti... Well, but we also need an anti-blue down here. Huh. Well, actually, let's go for a little bit of risk. Let's put the anti-blue up here and hope we can confine them later on with an anti-red because we need all three to confine those. This is just a regular red. The anti-blue here, I will put down here. And now we can immediately confine those, right? Because we have blue and it's anti-color, which we can combine. So we have those right here. That is fine. And this one I will put on the discard pile for now. All right. Beam phase again. There's a blue, there is a down. That is good. We would need a down. But also we need to confine this one here, the anti-red. I'm not quite sure how we can do that yet, but let's see. And also we need an enter red up here to confine that. Okay, so let's see. Um, hmm. So if we put the red down here, we could confine these two again. That probably wouldn't be bad because then we would have our anti-charm and our charm already. These two are pretty hard to get. That would be good. Um... I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let's put the anti-green up here. Now we need a little bit more room because we are putting a lot of stuff in the background here. Um, and then I will put the red down here just to confine these two because next round we're done. And this one I will discard for now. All right, and now we have the last beam phase for round one. Put these here. Um, and we need an anti-red up there. So let's take the anti-red here so we can confine these three, right? Because we have all three anti-colors. And anything I will put down here, I will not be able to confine, I think. Uh, no. And that will be discarded then because I can't confine it. So I will put the anti-strange down here because that's something we don't need. But we will need the anti-up, so the up next round. So that was it for the first round. Now we have the refresh phase. In the refresh phase, we discard all three quarks at the detector down here. So that one is, this one will be discarded, put there, right? Then we discard all the confined quarks in the background. So all we, because the background will not help us achieve the goal, right? We will, in the background, we need to just confine stuff so we get it back. So the confined quarks here will go into the discard pile as well. And the free quarks at the, uh, in the background will be annihilated. Annihilated cards will be put like that here and we will not ever see them in the game again. So I used a strange and an anti-bottom because these are things we don't need for our goal, right? Remember, we need two up quarks, one down, one strange and one anti-strange. All right, and then we um, just check for the loss condition. Um, there is a loss condition if we have um, if we have annihilated 
two up quarks or two charm or three down, then it's impossible to win and then we immediately lose, but that never happened to me. So I think we're fine there because I usually just annihilate stuff that I don't, I don't necessarily need. Then we add one annihilate card here to our deck. We shuffle the deck, just give it a quick overhand shuffle like this, and then we turn it over. Oh, and that's the annihilate card. And then we turn it over. And now our cards that we played last round will have the opposite, because all cards have the opposite on the other side. If you have a bottom here, then we have an anti-bottom. If we have an anti-charm, then we have a charm, right? And also the anti-color, anti-red, red. So that is important to know. All right, now we start round two with our beam phase again. We deal those out. Now the annihilate card always, we always put that in the discard pile and also we need to annihilate a free quark, a quark that is not confined in either the background or the collider, but we don't have a free quark at the moment because these don't count. In the background or on the detector, we don't have any free quarks because everything is confined, so that is great. Okay, and now we need to put one in the background again and one down here. We don't need to discard one because we only have two cards. Um, red up, perfect, that is great. We need up down here. So I would definitely put that down here. We need to somehow still confine it with something else. And now, I, oh wait, first in the background, I will put that and then put that down here. And now I sh I'll, I'll show you something else you can do in this game. We can always reconfigure the confinement here. So what I can do now is I can take the red up and put it together with the anti-red anti-charm, right? Um, because now we um, these two are confined and the bottom will not be confined anymore, but we don't need the bottom. Right? That will just be discarded later on. That's cool, it will come back, whatever, but we don't need that, right? So it's possible to actually reconfigure your confinements. And that is really important. If you couldn't do that, you probably couldn't even win the game at all. All right, that was our collider phase. And now we go um, into the beam phase again. So um, let's see what we need. We need two up, we have one. We need, um, we need one more up and we need one more down. And then we have everything. We just also need to look at the colors, right? Um, so we have um, blue and anti-blue, we have red, anti-red. Well, no, the anti-blue doesn't count because that's a bottom, we don't need a bottom. But we have a charm, we have blue, red and anti-red. So we need a blue and a green. So that green here would be good. And if we can combine that with a blue later on, then we um, can even, con even confine that here. But first, before we do that, we need to put something up here. Well, um, the charm I want to get, well, we don't really, it doesn't really matter what we do here, but I will put the anti-blue up here just to confine those because then we get those back later on. That is good because that will be a down next round. We don't really need a down, but we never know. We might have to put another down or another charm down here just because of the colors, right? Because we also need to have the right colors. Um, so the, and then I will put the down, down here, as I said, and the charm in the discard pile. All right, and there's another up, but that's the wrong color. There's a blue up, we don't, we want that. We want that one, right? No, actually, wait, 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 let me, let me think. We need, no, we need a red up. We need a red up, but we have a red up already. All right, then we need to reconfigure a few things here, right? So up, up, down. Yeah, I think we are having a few issues here with our colors. So we need to see how we can solve that. Um, we need to see how we can solve that. Yeah, let's see how we can do that. Okay, so um, we need to put something in background, but we only have one card left after that. Um, so we will probably not be able to confine that anymore so that we will lose. So um, down and up, we will definitely don't, definitely don't want to lose. So let's put the green. Strange up here. And um, what will we put down here? Hmm, the other down, we don't want to confine. We don't need that. We could reconfigure a few things here, right? Um, we could reconfigure a few things. If we take, because if we take the green and the red and the blue, then we have charm, red and gr uh, charm up and down. That is pretty good put it like this and the anti-charm we can put here with the bottom. That means we, 
yeah, we would still need a red up, which doesn't exist anymore. It, there is no red up anymore because you already have that there. But let's see what we can do there. All right, but like this, it would work. Um, and then I will just, well, we need the up next round. I'm thinking that we might not be able to win anymore because we need one of these up arrows. It doesn't really matter which one probably. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that we already lost. But I can't say that for certain, but I think so. Because we still need an up arrow and we can't get one next round. You know what? I think we will reconfigure things. I think I will put the up down here. So we have two ups and one blue that, uh, and one, one blue charm that is fine. And this one will then just be an anti down next round. But we ha also have that here, that anti down, right? So we could be able to somehow make that. And then we will be discarded. And then we have that one here and we always need to put it up. So this one will go up here and then be lost. There's nothing we can, well, we can actually do something. We can reconfine these. So blue and anti-blue, that is fine. So we won't lose that at least, but we don't really need it. Okay. And I think this way I am okay with it. It's not great, but it's okay. So, and now um, we, again, these go to the discard pile here in the collider. Um, the confined ones also go in the discard pile in the background, from the background, and the these are loose. The loose ones from the background, they go into the annihilation, annihilate deck, and I think we are still fine. We have not lost yet. Then we will add another annihilate card to the deck, shuffle it, and turn it over. So, okay, like this. All right, so let's see how we can do that. Down, we still need down. Um, okay. Oh, wait, actually, I think we can make it now. Okay, I think that was a good idea that I took the up down here and the other down I took out of the game. I think that was a good idea because now we first need to do the Annihilate card, but there is no free Quark here. And then we will put the blue, I will put in the background and I will take the red down here. And now we can reconfine let me reconfine these, right? Because anti-red and red, that works. And I think, I think you might have it now. So we, these, these are all confined, right? These here are all confined. We need, um, we need two up, we have that. We need one down, we have that. We need a charm and an anti-charm. We have all of that, we have all of that. Then we need blue, red, green, we have that. We need a color that is red. And it's anti-color, anti-red. So we actually made it. <laughs> that was the last round. We would have had, we would have had one more real round after that. So it was really, really close. But I'm so happy that I was actually able to win um, while shooting this video because this game is really tough. All right, that's the end of my playthrough. So here we have our perfect confinement, and then the game. Um, immediately ends. So we don't have to continue and everything. It wouldn't matter anyways, because we have everything, right? We would have to annihilate one of these two, which doesn't matter because we have our, um, we have all confinement here. Wow, that was really, really tough. So um, yeah, that is the end of my playthrough. But before you leave, just a few thoughts about the game. So um, I really like the theme. Yes, it's not, it's not anything with animals or with, I don't know, cute little robots. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Um, it's very geeky. It is very abstract, of course, right? You have these uh, quarks and I have no idea. I'm very bad at all of these things. So I don't understand any of that here, <laughs> but um, the theme is pretty cool. It is something else. I can't say that I've ever played a game with a theme like that. And I don't know if I will just because, well, it's not my most favorite topic, but it's cool to have that. It's such a small game, it's such a small package. So I think kudos for the theme, I like that. Um, the game is quite quick to play. So um, I had to explain a lot in this video, but if you know how the game plays, you can play it in 10 to 15 minutes. Like most button shy games, it plays really quick. That is great. The puzzle is incredible um, in terms of difficulty mostly, but also it really works your brain. This is not a play game I can play every day. And 
I think this game would be easier if you would count all the cards, you exactly know what's in the deck, what's coming up, and then you can pretty much puzzle that together and you hit, maybe. Um, I don't do that. I mostly just go from round to round. As usual in my games, I'm quite the tactical player. I'm not the I'm not the strategy kind of guy. So um, and it does work out as you can see, but um, I think you can play much more. Uh, you can strategize much more because after you have shoved the first deck and you have gone through the first deck, then you exactly pretty much know what comes up the next rounds. You don't know what order, but you know what comes up. And that is important. You need to look ahead a little bit. You saw that I replaced one of my downs that was confined with the up here because I knew otherwise I would lose because I looked ahead. I knew what was coming up because you always know the cards that you just played. They will be the other way the next round. And that is a really great concept that works really well. Um, so I like this game a lot. If you like these really thinky solo games, if you would really like to work your brain, this is probably the toughest solo game or the toughest button shy game I have played at all at least button shy game. Um, it really, really, really makes you work <laughs> for your win. Um, one thing that I think will fade over time is um, wanting to play this game because yes, um, it does work your brain and it's, it's different each time in terms of what is coming up, but it is essentially the same puzzle every time, even more than Rove, which I played um, just a few weeks ago on my channel. Um, it is pretty much the same every time. I have no idea if expansions for that are planned or maybe there are expansions that I have missed. Um, I will have to look that up. And I don't know if it's possible to make expansions for that. I have no idea, but that would maybe make the game, uh, like increase the longevity a little bit. But I mean, that's how I go into this game every time I play it. I go into this game like, okay, I have the same puzzle as I did last time, but I really want that puzzle at the moment. I want to have that thinky puzzle and see if I can somehow crack it again this time, right? So um, if you like these really thinky games and you like button shy games and solo games in general and games that play quick and on that really great small package that we are used to um, from button shy games that I would that I would highly suggest the game. Um, if you like the more casual solo games rather, and you want a little bit more variety and everything. Um, this game, if you can get it for with uh, cheap shipping, then it would still be a recommendation, but I wouldn't recommend it as highly then. Then there are definitely other button shy solo games that I would recommend more and that I like more also. A top 10 button shy games list will come at some point, um, but I still haven't received and played all the games I want to uh, before I do that list. So you will have to Wait a little bit longer for that. But um, if you want my suggestions for really good games, just hit me up. You know where to reach me in the comments down here, under my videos or on Twitter, on Instagram. All right, that's enough rambling from my side. Um, if you're still watching, thank you very much for doing so. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough of this quite unknown, not as well-known button shy game. And if that's the first of my videos you have seen, why don't you head over to my channel. I have an entire playlist of button shy games and this playlist will get more and more games. Also a lot of other videos for board gaming and a little bit of RPGs and I'd love to see on my channel. So um, why don't you check it out? And apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the very next video. Take care everyone and cheers.